Emily and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining and I think today's video is going to be extremely helpful and informative so let's go ahead and get started. Today's video is the second in a two-part series all about Poshmark data and Poshmark metrics. And in the first video, which I will link here if you wanna go catch up on that before watching this video, I talked about all the data points I capture for my Poshmark reselling business. I talked about things like the date an item was listed, capturing the brand of an item, capturing how much an item was listed for, and all of those data points in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. And in this video, I'm going to take those data points and show you some metrics that I personally like to run on that data to make better decisions in my Poshmark business. Similar to the last video, I'm going to do a screen share in this video and show you exactly how to create Excel pivot tables on your Poshmark data to run metrics. And we'll just go through a couple different examples so you get the hang of it. And then after you get done with this video, maybe you can try it out and let me know how it goes for you. If you like these types of videos, if you like data videos, I know this is a little bit more nerdy than my typical type of video, definitely give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, it helps a lot. And I would really appreciate it. At this point, let's get started with the screen share. This is the same inventory spreadsheet I went over in my last video. It has my Poshmark inventory stats as well as my Poshmark sales stats, and it's all combined together in one spreadsheet. And in this video, I wanna show you how I run metrics off of this data, off of this Poshmark data. And on this spreadsheet here that I'm showing right now, I have all of the fields I shared with you last time, as well as a couple of calculated fields that I'm gonna to use to run my metrics off of. So these are really important, and I'm not gonna to go too much into the different formulas that I built because they can be a little complicated. My husband, AJ, helped me a lot with these. He is an accountant by trade. But I'll go over in general the three highlighted fields on this tab and then I'll show you how to build what's called a pivot table in Microsoft Excel so that you can run metrics on your own Poshmark data. So essentially I have, like I said, all the fields that I showed you in the last video and three additional highlighted fields that are calculated fields that I put in this spreadsheet. The first calculated field is fees. So I calculate the amount of fees that I'm paying for each item that I sell on Poshmark. And that's column K here. Depending on the platforms that you sell on, the fees could be different, but I do go ahead and calculate that. And then the next column that's calculated is column P, which is the days that an item that I listed on Poshmark is on the market. That is a really important field for things like sell-through rate, and I'm not gonna get too much into that in this video, but it can be very helpful to calculate a variety of things. The main point being that you would use that field to see how old your inventory is, what you need to be getting rid of, what's selling really fast, what's selling really slow, et cetera. So that's column P. And then column Q is probably what I would argue is the most important column in this spreadsheet, which is the net profit of each item that sells on Poshmark. In business terms, profit is essentially what you sell an item for minus the expenses of that item. In this case, the fees of the item and the cost of the item. So profit is a really important number to calculate. If you want me to go into more detail on that or if you have questions, just let me know. But for now, I'm just gonna say those are the three fields that I make sure to calculate in my spreadsheet so I can run the best metrics that I can on it. So now I'm gonna show you how to create a pivot table, and this is the foundational aspect in Excel to being able to run metrics on your Poshmark data. And if you would like me to show you how to run pivot tables on the data Poshmark provides to you in the Poshmark inventory report, and the Poshmark sales report, just let me know down below and I would be happy to do so. So in order to create the pivot a pivot table, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the entire set of my data. So in this case, it's going to be highlighting cell A1 over to cell S9. And I'm just going to highlight those cells. If you have a really big pivot table, just highlight the data, all the pages of data. 
And then after I've highlighted my data, I'm gonna go over to the Insert tab on the top of the Excel ribbon, and I'm going to go to Pivot Table. That's the option that I'm going to select. And then there's a couple options here. It looks really complicated, but this is a pretty easy menu to navigate through. Essentially, it's just going, since you've already selected those cells A1 through S9, it's going to automatically put that in the table range. Just leave that exactly how it is. And then it's gonna ask you where you want the pivot table to live in this Excel spreadsheet. I'm just gonna select the option called New Worksheet and click OK. That's just going to put these charts and graphs in another tab in Excel that you can refer reference to whenever you need to. So here I'm just gonna click OK and then I'm gonna name this tab. So I'm gonna call this Poshmark Metrics. And then with this tab, I'm going to click into the pivot table one and basically, I'm just going to drag and drop the fields that I wanna run metrics on. And initially, when you take a look at this, it may seem a little bit more complicated, but once you get more into the swing of things, I promise you it's gonna get easier to follow and understand. And right now, I'm just gonna go over a simple metric for you that I calculate a lot of times in my business, which is how much profit I'm making per store that I shop at. And I talked about this a little bit in my last video, but that is a really important metric for me to understand so I know which stores are most profitable and where I should be spending the most of my time sourcing because sourcing on Poshmark, we all know, takes a lot of time and I wanna make sure I'm making the best decisions possible on what store, stores to source at. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, click into pivot table one and navigate over to the right hand side of the screen. And I am going to find a column called source store because that is where I want to find the net profit for based on different stores. So I'm summing up the net profit for my items for each store that I shopped at. I'm going to take the column called source store and I'm going to just click on it and drag it down to the rows section and immediately you're gonna see a result here. So over on the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna see that all of a sudden I have four row labels. I have the stores that I've sold inventory at in my Poshmark spreadsheet. So again, this is all manufactured data, but I've got Goodwill Main Street, Nordstrom Rack, Wichita. That doesn't exist. We don't have a Nordstrom Rack in Wichita. I wish we did. Uh, I have Plato's Closet, Harper Road, and I have Salvation Army, Apple Road. So those are my four source stores. And then what I wanna do here is I wanna sum the profit for each of these stores. So I'm going back over to my right-hand menu and I'm scrolling down until I find the field net profit. And I am going to put that in the values box. And this is a little bit hard to explain, but essentially the default value that it's gonna give you is a sum. You can do other values like your average net profit, your highest net profit, your lowest net profit. There are a lot of other options under this value field setting and you can see the default is sum. So that's what I'm gonna leave it at because that's what I want, but just know if you're looking for a different calculated value in this field, such as the average net profit per, per store, just click this drop-down box on this right-hand side of the screen, screen and click Value Field Settings, and then pick the one that you wanna use. There's more if I scroll down. But essentially, I just want sum for this example, so I'm gonna leave it as is. And then you're gonna see over on the left-hand side of the screen, I all of a sudden have some data that I can play around with for my business. And this is a really small data set, and I did that purposefully because I didn't wanna overwhelm you with a ton of data. But as you add more data to it, the more valuable I think it'll be to you. So in this case, I have four stores that I've shopped at in my example, and immediately when looking at it, I could make a decision on where I wanna spend most of my time sourcing. 
Obviously, there are a lot of other factors at play. I know I've had stores that have been really, really great sourcing opportunities at one point, and then they just kind of went downhill. And I've had stores that were really not very good sourcing opportunities at one point, and they've suddenly become better. So it can change over time. Definitely keep an open mind to this. But if I were to look at this spreadsheet right now, what I would say is the places that I need to be spending most of my time are Plato's Closet, Harper Road, and then Goodwill Main Street, then Salvation Army, Apple Road, and then Nordstrom Rack, Wichita. So it, I'm looking at the net profit and making decisions for my business, and it's a really simple and easy way to run metrics for your business that are valuable and helpful to help you make better decisions. I'm gonna show you one more example of how to create a pivot table and I'll go through it a little bit more quickly just to illustrate another way you could use this data. So again, following the exact same steps, I'm gonna highlight cell A1 over to cell S9, and I'm gonna click Insert Pivot Table. And this time, I'm gonna use the exact same worksheet I used before, an existing worksheet. And I'm going to go over to Poshmark Metrics and I'm gonna select cell A19. So I'm gonna put another pivot table on the same Poshmark Metrics tab and then I'm gonna click OK. And you're gonna see pivot table two has been created here. So I'm gonna click into the pivot table. That's the way you're gonna see the right-hand menu here. And this time I'm going to do my average days on market per brand. I think this could be helpful to see which brands are selling quickly for you and which ones aren't to help you make better decisions on which brands to buy. So I've clicked into pivot table here and the field I want on the left hand side here is brand. So I'm going to take the brand field and I'm going to click on it and drag it down to rows. And it's gonna give me all the different brands in my spreadsheet. And then the data field I wanna capture is the amount of days on market for each brand. So I'm gonna find the days on market field and I'm gonna drag it down to the values column. And instead of having this field be a sum, I'm going to click the arrow on the right hand side like I showed you before. And I'm gonna click values field settings and I'm gonna choose average. So it gives me the average days on market per brand. And obviously this is a very small set of data, so it's gonna be very similar, the sum and the average. But if you had, let's say you sold a lot of Rothy's, wouldn't we all love that? If you sold a lot of Rothy's, you could see if they were selling quickly or if they were selling really slowly, etc. So in this scenario, I could say that, wow, Rothy's sell really quick. I should be picking up more of those. And Lulu's, they're taking about 23 days. That brand is on average taking 23 days to sell. So maybe I won't pick that up as much because it's not selling as quickly. You can also add filters in here to filter by certain dates. So I know some items on Poshmark are seasonal. If you wanna add a filter to this and maybe just filter by items that sold, let's say in the month of March, you could take the date sold field and put it in the filters section. And then you can easily just drop down that menu. You click select multiple items and just filter for anything that's sold in the month of March. And that just brings back a few rows. So there is a lot more capability with pivot tables than I went over here. I wanted to keep this really high level because I thought it would be a good introductory tool on how to use metrics for Poshmark. But if you want me to go into more details, just let me know down below. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this provides you some value and gives you, gives you some ideas on how to utilize your Poshmark metrics to make decisions in the future. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other ideas for Poshmark data videos or metrics videos, definitely leave them down below and I will try to film different ones based on what you like and definitely go out and try this yourself. Let me know how it goes for you and I'll see you next time. Bye.